Now, going to DC biasing circuits, uh, we're going to do all of it, okay? These are, uh, the, the, all, everybody's goal is to amplify the signal, okay? Amplify the signal, come get something big, but they all have their advantages, disadvantages, uh, and that's what we are going to, you know, analyze uh, now, moving forward. Fixed bias. The first configuration is fixed bias. So let's see how a fixed bias circuit looks like. Fixed bias configuration. Right. And for the most part, we are looking at BJTs here, right? BJTs, bipolar junction transistor. Okay. In a fixed fixed by circuit, you have an input signal here. That input signal goes through a capacitor, uh, and then it goes to the base of the transistor. Uh, there, there's no emitter resistor. The emitter is just directly connected to the ground. Uh, you have power here, VCC. It goes to RB. Uh, RB is the base resistance, okay? RB is the base resistance. VCC is the supply, power supply. The current that goes through the RB resistor is IB, okay? That's what it over, over here also. A base current is the current that goes into the base of the transistor. IB is the base, transistor, uh, base current. The power supply is also connected to RC. RC is the collector resistance. And then this collector resistance, the current flowing through it is IC. IC is the collector current. It's important to know this because I'm not going to write all of it every time. I'm just going to use IC, RC, IB, VC in my analysis. So it will be obvious what those means. And at the emitter, I basically don't have anything. VCE is the output voltage here. As I told you, output voltage. And then plus here, minus here, so that's the voltage between base and the emitter, VBE. And how much would be VBE, folks, remember? Base emitter voltage. And it's going to 0 be- 0.7 volts. 0 0.7 volts, remember that, that's important. Now, also remember we got these capacitors over here. When we do our signal analysis or doing a fixed price, in a fixed price configuration or, or any other, con uh, we do two kinds of analysis. One is the DC analysis and the other is the AC analysis. So here we are doing a DC analysis. Uh, and you know what happens to capacitors in a DC analysis. Uh, because they offer high reactance, so we just simply think that they don't exist, okay? So we just simply just remove them. We don't include them in our analysis when we are doing DC analysis. Okay, we, this is how fixed bias would look like. If I may ask, we did three kinds of configuration, common emitter, common base, common collector. Which configuration is this? Which of the transistor terminal is connected directly to the ground? E. So this is a common emitter configuration. All right, now we're gonna go here. Also, before I go over here, I want to also split it into half, okay? If I like, I can also, is there a white here? Okay, there is a white here. I'm going to erase this and use the white color. I can also do like this, correct? It's the same thing because VCC was common to both the wires, correct? This part of the circuit is the input. That's the input, okay? You have the IB, which is the base current, input current. This part of the circuit is the output, okay? And as you see, it's a common emitter configuration. The emitter is common to both uh, base and collector. Okay, our goal here is to find out IB, which is the input current, base current, and also find out the collector current, which is the output current, which is this current over here. Okay, we are going to apply KVL here, Kirchhoff's voltage law, and we are going to apply to the input side first. And uh, I can technically draw this green curve that you see the input side like this. Okay, it's the same thing. Uh, you got VCC here, you got RB here, then you're going into the base of the transistor over here, uh, and then emitter can directly connected to the, to the ground. So this is your input loop, input loop. And because this input loop is between base and the emitter, emitter is here, correct? So we would refer to it as a base emitter loop. If you, instead of this, if you wish to write input loop, that's, that is also fine. But it's pretty obvious that this input loop is between uh, base and the emitter. 
so that's why the name base emitter loop okay now we're going to start from here okay we're going to start from here applying kvl so what do we get so we have negative here positive here right positive here negative here positive here negative here and then this is directly connected to the ground okay so if we start from here the vcc so i have vcc here and we go into positive to negative so there's a decline there's a slope so the, hence there's a negative sign uh, the current flowing through rb is ib base current so we get ib times rb okay minus vbe the potential across these two terminals is referred to as vbe minus vbe and there's nothing at the emitter it's just directly connected to the ground okay if you i can also write it down some make it like this okay and then have a common ground okay so minus vbe equals to zero from this equation i can rearrange the equation such ibrb equals to vcc minus vbe correct and then from here if i move rb to the right hand side i get this equation so if i know vcc if VBB, VBE will is known, that is 0 0.7. And if I know RB, I can find out the base current, okay? Now, if I may ask, can I, do I have this option to control the base current? Remember the analogy I was giving that you have a faucet and then you can change the tap, uh, you know, um, to control the flow of the water, okay? Can we do that with this equation? Can we do that with this equation? And if we can, how? by changing what parameters? Notice in the denominator, I got base resistance RB. If I put the value for RB very high, then what's gonna happen? If RB is going to be extremely high, then what is going to happen to the base current, the input current? There's an inverse relationship, right? So if the RB goes up, then the IB goes down, right? So th this is important to know that if you need to change your base current, you can adjust the value of the RB. Again, folks, remember the goal is that you are an engineering designer and that you should be able to design circuit on your own knowing these things. Okay. All right. So let's now move on to collector emitter loop. The collector emitter loop here is the red. Okay. Uh, and I can redraw this circuit such that I only have the output, not the input side. So notice here you got VCC here, you got the RC here plus minus here, the current going through it is IC. Uh, then you have uh, VCE at the output side, which is the voltage across the collector uh, and the emitter terminal. So we refer to it as VCE. Uh, and then we can just apply Ohm's law. So we get VCC, VCC minus IC, RC minus VCE equals to zero. I'm looking for VCE here. So if I uh, keep VCE here, then I get VCC minus ICRC here. Okay, and that's where this equation is over here. From the previous equation, from the previous analysis, we had IB, right? We had calculated IB, assuming that these uh, parameters are known, RB, VCC, and IBBE. We can apply this equation, IC equals to beta times IB, okay? Beta is going to be given, okay? So say beta is usually in the range from 90 to uh, 400, and it will be given in the data sheet. If you know beta, IB you get from this equation, you get IC, correct? You put that IC in this equation right here, you put IC, RC will be known, you know VCC, you can find out VCE, which is the output voltage, okay? So this is how the analysis is going to be, that first you're gonna apply KVL on the input side of the circuit, then you're gonna drive the equation for IB, which is the base current. You're then going to apply the KVL on the output loop of the circuit, and then drive the equation for VCE and then plug in these values to find out the output voltage. Okay, that's how the analysis is going. One thing that is, um, uh, uh, that is important here, folks, you see this beta right here, which is 90 to 40, 400? This is room temperature, 
okay this is a room temperature if the temperature changes then this number changes and you know if this number changes your ic changes because ic is a function of beta and ib so it is extremely important that you know beta you know stays as it is which is practically not possible so therefore we look at other options other configuration then fix files which can provide us with more stability in our circuit okay something that is independent of beta because beta changes as a function of temperature i mean think of it you are using some transistor which has some beta value and uh, it's being used in uh, aviation industry so if you are you know flying on a plane the temperatures are like significantly low like negative 40 fahrenheit you want your transistor to work properly right you don't want something bad happen and that would be catastrophic. So it's important that we come up with circuits where beta dependency is, you know, is less. When the transistor is operating in saturation, current through the transistor is at maximum possible value. We already know that. Um, what I'm gonna do here, folks, is just so you know how do I get this equation, I'm going to write the output loop equation here. Okay. This equation, I'm going to put IC equals to zero, okay, one time. Why I'm putting IC equals to zero? Because in a, in a cutoff region, IC is zero, okay? If I put IC zero in the above equation, I get what? VCE equals to VCC, because this whole term will be zero, right? Zero. So VCE will equals to VCC, means the output voltage will equals to VCC. And then similarly, in this equation, if I put VCE equals to zero, and that's because in saturation region, VCE is equals to zero and IC is maximum. And if I do that, then I get v this term will be zero, right? So I get VCC equals to ICRC and IC will be equals to VCC over RC, okay? And then this is referred to as the saturation curve. That's how I get this equation right here, VCC over RC. In the output loop equation, I can write down here in the output. And these two equations are important. This over here, this is A and this is B, because we then use these two equations to do the load line analysis. Mm -hmm.